Secretary in the Ministry of Education, His Excellency, or should I say Your Excellency, Peter Chen, Ambassador, Republic of China on Taiwan, Mr. Darian Lui, Attaché to the Honorable Bradley Felix, Parliamentary Representative for the Constituency of Choiseul, Mistress Ramona Henry Wynn, the Executive Director of the Cultural Development Foundation. Miss Solange Belizier, Deputy Human Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information. Mr. Imran Emmanuel, Officer in the Ministry of Tourism and Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information. Mr. Barry Paul, Deputy General Manager of the National Skills Development Center. Our facilitators, staff members of the Embassy of Taiwan, Participants, ladies and gentlemen, let me once again welcome you to the official launching ceremony of the Spotlight on Taiwan Craft Enhancement Project, which is a collaboration between the Embassy of China and Taiwan and the people of St. Lucia by way of the Cultural Development Foundation. The craft enhancement project is specifically designed to enhance the skills of the artisans, the majority of them from this very picturesque and wonderful 
um, constituency of Chozel and to give you or, or deliver the welcome remarks and to give you a little background on the project, please help me welcome Mrs. Ramona Henry Wynn, the Executive Director of the Cultural Development Foundation. The project that we are here today to launch is with, titled With Through, Developing the Indigenous Craft Sector Through Cultural Exchange Initiatives. I think for as far back as we can remember, as Sozellians, as St. Lucians, the craft sector had always been a very vibrant one in, the, in St. Lucia, and more specifically, in the community of Suzel Saltibus. Suzel was the admiration of visitors and locals alike. They created products such as decorative pieces, household pieces, souvenirs. And at one point in time, the sector was thriving, it was blooming. But somewhere along the road, a few bumps and humps, and uh, we've gotten to a point where we need to do something to reinvigorate that industry that we so love in St. Lucia. Many studies have been conducted uh, more recently, the Cultural Development Foundation did a mapping project in 2017. And uh, in doing the, the project, we mapped, we mapped the crafters. One of the things that were revealed was that whilst the crafters are willing and able to ply their craft, are willing to create, but they encountered some bumps along the way. One being, um, scarcity of material, two, resources to be able to get involved in any dynamic marketing or promotion activity or strategy to help them market the products in the way that they would like to do. And moreover, the, the industry has not blossomed in the way it, it should, although it has that potential, it has not done it in that way. And this project, coming out of the numerous studies that has been done with the OE OECS, with um, the OAS has, been, has done one, Cultural Development Foundation, and many others have been done. I think the bottom line for all of the projects, all of the surveys that have been done, is the need for a marketing and promotion strategy that would allow the crafters not to just make pieces and have them sitting at home or struggling to sell it, is to create a market that is vibrant, a market that will take them beyond the shores of St. Lucia, a market that will speak to the value, the vitality, the vibrance of their creativity. And this is what this project has been designed to assist with. It is not the end all or the be all of what we are hoping will come out at the end of this project, but it is a start. What we want from, what we expect from the CDF is that we give the industry a bit of a boost, a shot in the arm, where the creatives, the, the artisans can feel that life, that hope, that future that they saw how many years ago, that they can begin to look at it again and see that there is hope at the end of the tunnel. That, because to do that, what we have done as a CDF, we have brought in quite a few partners on board. Export St. Lucia, the Ministry of Commerce. We have also brought in the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, who will assist us with creating a marketing and promotion strategy, which we will do toward, which we will utilize going forward for the project. The project is, is looking at four phases. The first phase is to really evaluate the products, the existing products that the artisans have, and what is it that we need to do 
to a system what is it that we can do to differentiate what they're doing the designs can we incorporate new skills can we incorporate new techniques to assist us in creating products that have more value that can allow us to be out there and to put St. Lucia on the map as a, an island, a little rock that can produce great things. The second component is the intercultural exchange between Taiwan and St. Lucia. And as I said to the, the artisans yesterday, we don't want to change what you do. What we are trying to do with this project is to enhance the skills that you already have. If there is a quicker way of weaving, we want you to learn the quicker way of weaving. If there is a new style that is in sync with market trends out there, we want you to learn that. So that when you have a completed product, anybody, locals, visitors alike, would want to buy it. One of the things that has affected the, the, the crafters as well is the fact that you have a lot of products that are not made in St. Lucia, but are labeled made in St. Lucia. And we are hoping that through this project and other projects that have been done previously, that we can begin to eliminate that infiltration of products from outside that are labeled made in St. Lucia. As persons would say, it's a quick check for the creatives. Because you see you work so hard on a daily basis to create authentic indigenous products. And you have products that are coming from far and wide and they're taking center stage. And I keep saying, I don't really blame the sellers of those pieces because at the end of the day for them, it's their bottom line, money in their pocket. But it's for us now to work with all of the other agencies to do that change in mindset. Because only, it is only with a change in mindset people will begin to understand the work that collectively we are trying to do. Because if they get the appreciation that when you spend the money here, you grow your economy, you grow your crafters, you allow them to produce, you allow them to thrive, and you allow them to continue to grow and that has a ripple effect of growing our tourism industry because we know our craft goes far and wide. And you know, when we connect the pieces, we connect the dots, then we can have a product that everybody can appreciate. One of the things that we are also hoping to do with this project is to reinvigorate that local palette for locally made products. We want St. Lucians to begin to buy those products again. I remember growing up as a child, a little Sejon with the little bar across it. That's what I sat in as a child. Not the plastic and the metal ones that you see in the market now. And the children, we were comfortable in them. We loved them because we could pull out that little rod and get up if we wanted to, if our parents were not looking. And we want to re-energize re and whet the appetite of our local for those products that we have because they have value. They are beautiful. Yesterday we took Yaya to Crafty Creations down the road and she saw some of the products and she was like taken aback at the quality and the, the, the craftsmanship that was involved in creating those products. And as she said, she is willing to learn from you, not just give you, but to get from you. So it's a two-way street. She's learning from you, you were learning from her. Yesterday I heard some persons volunteered to assist in the facilitating by teaching us some of the things that they have developed as techniques. And for that we are quite grateful. At the end of the day, what we want to see is money in our people's pockets. We want to see money in our creative hands. We want them not to have a reliance on government but to be independent to create and to be able to sell because i think people feel better about themselves when they can do things to help themselves once they get that support like what we're doing here today i think they're quite 
satisfied to get a sort of support so that they can do what they need to do. I don't think that people like to be dependent and you know wait for the left leg to move, then the right leg move. I think people want to know that they have that level of independence, that they can work hard for what they want and feel proud of themselves at the end of the day. And we say to all of you crafters who are present here with us today, keep your minds open, keep your eyes open, keep your thoughts open. You are creatives. You can create. We anticipate that you will pick up from some of the techniques that Yaya will be teaching you. And then you will fuse that into what you know how to do best. Some of you use different natural materials. You can use what you know and fuse it with things that other, art, other of the artisans are using. So you fuse them and you come up with new ideas, new products. And you work with each other, you feed off each other's energies, each other's strengths. Because that is the only way we could grow. No man is an island, we cannot do it ourselves. CDF could not do this by ourselves. The embassy, through their Ministry of Culture in the Republic of Taiwan, China, Taiwan, was able to come forth and give us the necessary support. We had to go to other agencies like Ministry of Commerce, our Ministry of Tourism, Culture, Creative Industries, Investment, and Information. We had to go to Ministry of Commerce and Export St. Lucia. So you see, we too, we need the support. And we are saying to you, be opened. Be creative. Do what you are best of. Do what the world knows you for. Creating authentic, indigenous, indigenous story craft pieces. Do not be afraid to learn. Do not be close to learning. Do not be afraid to ask the necessary questions. Because we don't only have Gaia with us, we have Miss Finola Jennings Clark, whom all of you call Auntie Fifi. She has worked on previous projects with you. She has written quite a bit on crafting Suzelle. So we say to you, this is a wonderful and golden opportunity that has been created for you. We ask you to embrace it. We ask you to make the most out of it. And uh, as we said, when, once this project is over, we will not drop, drop you in the wilderness. We'll continue to monitor through, uh, uh, we're gonna to continue to monitor your progress as you go along. We're gonna to continue to work with the other agencies to see what we can do and how we can continue to work with you. Because we really want, with this new thrust of heritage, um, Village tourism, we want you to be the beneficiaries. We want you, not the products that are made out of the place, but the work that you do to benefit, that your families will benefit, your children will benefit. And we say whatever it is that you learn here today, young, middle-aged, not so young, we want you to learn and to pass on. Pass on to your colleagues, pass on to your children. If you get an opportunity to go into one of the schools, in the community, go out, offer your assistance, because you want to pass on that knowledge. It is only through the passing on of that knowledge, the craft can continue to grow, the industry can continue to grow. With that said, I wish to welcome every crafter who has put down everything to be here with us, because we know the season, the tourism season has reopened, cruise, everything has reopened, and some of you, this is the time you get to sell something and you have dedicated your time to being here with us and for this we really really want to say thank you for being here and we see your commitment and we will continue and make every effort to work with you to ensure that we can make Shozel craft Shozel and its environs the mecca that it used to be once upon a time i thank you Thank you very much, Mrs. Wynn. At this point, please allow me to recognize the presence of Ms. Clara Edwards, the president of the Social Crafters Association. Ms. Edwards, my apologies for not having mentioned you um, before. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Ms. Finola Jen Jennings-Clark, the resident 
um, facilitator who is going to deliver a background on craft and the artisans from Schwazel, Ms. Jennings Clark. Welcome everyone. Chazelle has a long and proud history as the, the center of craft in St. Lucia with traditions that mix African, Carib or Kalinago and European cultures into their own unique traditions. In the past, many hundreds, possibly over a thousand crafters earned at least part of their income from craft. However, today we have, if we are lucky, only maybe 200 Chazelle artisans still working. In our mapping project that Mrs. Wynne mentioned before, we were only able to count 130, if I remember correctly, somewhere around that. We know it wasn't all, but we also had to recognize that many of our crafters had moved on to other industries or simply stopped crafting. Now, I have to say that this is partly because we in St. Lucia have not yet truly recognized the importance of our treasure that we have in Chazelle. Not only are the skills of some of our crafters at the highest levels, the socio-economic system itself under which they craft is unique and particular and should be properly researched. It should be documented and it should be part of the education system in our schools and it should be something that we base genuinely sustainable development that is truly culturally relevant where you have the traditions, the method of doing business that has, has existed over the years which has largely been that people who are buyers will come in and they will work with the crafters and they will commission pieces, sometimes assist in designing pieces and then those pieces are sold and you have this sort of closed and symbiotic system. Unfortunately, um, over the decades, we've lost some of that system and we have seen many initiatives. Where we are today is the Chazelle Art and Craft Center. It was founded in the early 70s and first of all it was led by the master sculptor Vincent Joseph Udovic and for 40 or so years it was a vibrant center of learning, culture and commerce. We have lost a number of the elders of our tradition. Most recently I would like to pay respects to Miss Jean Cooper, who would have been with us here today and sadly passed on just a couple of weeks ago. And um, I'm a little short for the mic, maybe. <laughs> um, so Miss Jean Cooper would have been with us today with her inimitable spirit and her absolute dedication to being a lifelong learner. She would always inspire us with her wonderful personality and she would make sure that the crafters from her community would be here with her as well. May her spirit continue to inspire all of us as we go forward and I think we should channel her spirit in this workshop and dedicate what we do during the coming weeks to Miss Cooper's memory. We miss her very much. So today we celebrate the generosity of the Ministry of Culture of the Republic of China, Taiwan, through the embassy in St. Lucia. There are just so many beautiful crafts that are made in St. Lucia. And we have here the kernel that could be truly an all-encompassing, sustainable development miracle in St. Lucia. We have the possibility to go further than just collecting materials at the crafter's home and maybe moving on to having the growing of, of the couscous grass or voltiver, the pandanus scrupine, maybe even the sisal and the processing as agro-processing as separate possibilities for livelihoods, the crafters making the products, 
the tourism that will inevitably result, the Airbnb accommodation, and the commerce and the industry. And one of the things that I think many of us would like to see is that our tradition is documented, and not only just for the sake of showing it on NTN once in a while, which is wonderful in itself, but for really looking at the way that this industry has existed historically and how we can be inspired in science and technology, in economic, economics, as well as in arts and culture, and also, of course, in the tourism industry, and build a truly wonderful village tourism product here in St. Lucia. So, just to round off, although in this training we are dealing primarily with the basketry traditions of St. Lucia, I would like to just mention some of the others that Chazelle is famous for. You see on either side of me the um, tesson, the coal pot, cooking pot, which is made from our local clay in a wonderful um, tradition that is unique to St. Lucia. And we have the largest remaining community of traditional potters in the Eastern Caribbean, aside from the large islands. They are all women. I believe there's one gentleman who assists um, or who makes pots. But this is a woman's tradition. And it is something that none of us would like to see disappear. However, if I am correct, at our last count, there were no children of potters who planned to continue this tradition. So when we have je ne quayol some year in the not too distant future, we might not have the coal pots to cook our food on. And this is something that we need to take seriously. We also had a fabulous tradition of sculpture. Joseph Judovic was a master sculptor, and he passed that love onto a, a number of artisans who have provided wonderful carvings for some of our best hotels, not least of all Anne Chastenay and Souffre, who have been supporters of the local crafters for many years, Ladera Resort and other resorts in Souffre continue that tradition as well. Uh, we don't have any of our local chairs out right now, but um, you will see them around, our local furniture. It's on screen. It's on screen. Oh, it was just on screen. There you go. Um, which is made in a fabulous tradition where with handmade lathes that the artisans drive using their feet and um, woven seats. So there is much else to celebrate in, in Choiselle. And I must say that we cannot leave out the artisans who came from as far as Viewfort, Labrie, and Souffre, who are joining us here today to see you know, what each other is doing and see how, how collaborations, collaborations can be built. We're collaborating across the oceans with um, the Republic of China, Taiwan, and down the road with our crafters in neighboring communities. And we look forward to a wonderful time. It's been a while since we've gotten together. It's been a while since I've seen you. I am just here in the background to facilitate this time. And I am very pleased to be here. I wish everybody a wonderful training workshop. And I look forward to the exposition at the end where we will show off everything we've done. Thank you. Thank you very much, Finola. Ladies and gentlemen, and please join me um, along with the um, artisans and the craft makers from um, the community um, in recognizing um, the, pa the passing of the master crafter, uh, Miss Jean Cooper. A moment of silence, please. Can we all stand? One minute of silence.
Thank you very much. You may have your seat. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome His Excellency Peter Chen, Ambassador, Republic of China, Taiwan, who is going to address you and also introduce our esteemed facilitator out of Taiwan. Honorable Gibeon Ferdinand, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Tourism, Investment, Creative Industry, Culture and Information. Dr. Senator Honorable Pauline Antoine Prosper, Permanent Secretary of Ministry of Education. Ms. Sonoshe, Belzier, Deputy Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Tourism, Investment, Creative Industry, Culture, and Information. Ms. Ramona Henry Wang, Executive Director of Culture Development Foundation. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm honored to join you to welcome a special guest from Taiwan, bamboo artist Yaya Li. <laughs> who just arrived at Sanusha on Monday to conduct a months-long spotlight Taiwan cultural project with local crafters. There is an old saying, it's such a pleasure to have friends coming from afar. I've heard that Yaya has already made quite a few friends through virtual meeting and coordination with local facilitators. So many local artists actually look forward to her arrival. It's truly really a pleasure to have such a friend who brings the creativities and dynamics from Taiwan, as well as the goodwill to enhance those people-to-people -people relationship between Taiwan and St. Lucia. And many thanks to Honorable Gibeon Ferdinand and Honorable Pauline Antoine Prosper to join us today and support this event. I also would like to express my appreciation to Taiwan's Ministry of Culture and the St. Lucia Cultural Development Foundation and all related sectors in putting their crucial resources that have made this project possible. I believe more projects will emerge and blossom in the future, creating a wide range of cultural cooperation between Taiwan and St. Lucia. In addition to cultural exchanges, this project also serves as one of the pivotal projects of the Taiwan Embassy to help St. Lucia expand its own creative industries and assisting locals to rejuvenate their business in the post-COVID-19 era. We need people who can dream of things that never were and ask why not. So in the coming months, we look forward to seeing fruitful outcome from the brainstorming of the bright minds of, from Taiwan and Sedusia. Best wishes of the prosperity of local crafting industry and success of this project. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Mr. Um, Your Excellency. At this point, we have a little surprise for you. As you know, um, music is the engine room of the arts music, whether it be the performing arts or the creative arts. Um, not the visual arts, I should say. Music provides the heartbeat um, for whatever we, we create. And so this morning, we're just going to give you a little taste of one of our traditions. Is 
There are several pieces of instruments there, so he's selecting the best one. Show you some of you, you will also recognize um, our esteemed Mishak from Revolution. Please welcome Mishak, ladies and gentlemen. We've not seen him for a while.
wow. Indigenous to St. Lucia. Round of applause for them, ladies and gentlemen. This is Vishak Nestor and Argo Law, right? I'm saying it right. Maybe we might get a little more from them at the end, towards the end. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we now invite the representative or attache um, for the parliamentary um, representative of Social Honorable Bradley Felix, Mr. Darian Louis, to deliver a few remarks on his behalf. Observing and adopting the protocols already established, a craft felt good morning from the craft capital of Shuzel. <laughs> I would like to apologize on behalf of Honorable Bradley Felix, who had a minor accident on his way down from Canaries, a minor fender bender, nothing too serious. He has asked me to extend his sincere apologies to everyone present, of course, for not being able to be with us today. Um, a special apology he mentioned to extend to his Excellency, the Taiwanese Ambassador, who was really looking forward to seeing to fruition the first conversation that you guys had on coming to St. Lucia. He also mentioned that the discussion included the excellent skilled talent of Shuzelians, particularly in the field of craft, and looking at the ways to enhance their craft and make it more marketable in today's society. Also, he mentioned the abundance of bamboo in St. Lucia and the discussion you guys had, so he's more than happy that a member is here from Taiwan to extend this courtesy to us as St. Lucians. Um, Miss Wynn spoke to empowering our people, which is salient, of course, and I would like to make mention of a crafter from Shuzel, Miss Jane Fauché, who has recently um, put together a two-piece coal pot, which makes it much easier for logistics and shipping of the coal pot. So that's to say that the spirit of innovation and the spirit of willingness to learn, it definitely exists in shows also we welcome you guys here today. Um, with the advent of Etsy stores and the spike in demand for craft and handmade products internationally, we are happy that this enhanced project is here in Shuzel today. And we hope that it can open up these new channels for our crafters to retail as well. He has also mentioned that he will try to remain in contact with you if any assistance is needed on his end in his constituency, of course. So we, Schwazel, we, Schwazel, we thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Louis. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me a great pleasure to introduce to you the Honorable Gibeon Ferdinand, the Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture, and Information, who is going to deliver remarks on behalf of the Honorable Minister of Tourism. I can adjust and if you see me move a little bit it's because I'm still I'm still recovering from the effects of the musicians I really I really really enjoyed this um, really really are good you know it's not often you see someone play two instruments at once both a shak shak and a morpha gun that was awesome Mishak and your team Good luck, good, good job, man. Every time I come to Chazelle, I feel relaxed. It's just a place, if whether it's to play cricket or to visit, you just feel a sense of hospitality and welcome, especially when I just mingle with the crafters to the back. So thank you. Your Excellency, Peter Chen, the ambassador and members of your team. Special mention to Yaya. I've heard quite a good, few good things today. The colleague of mine, Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Dr. Prosper, the Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Department of Tourism, particular reference to creative industries, 
We also have our executive director of CDF and the staff, whoever else is part of the staff of CDF. Um, the Chosel Crafters Association and the president. The technicians who are making sure that we have coverage. I think they'll be struggling with the weather now. Let's hope everything goes well. Uh, the musicians, again, I want to mention them specially for giving a little bit of flavor to this, um, these proceedings and the representative of the parliamentary rep, as well as our esteemed local um, facilitator. And anyone else I may have omitted. Good morning. And I'm very happy to be in Chazelle. I bring you greetings from the Ministry of Tourism. And particular mention must be made to the fact that the creative sector, the creative industries, is not an appendage of the Ministry of Tourism Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information. Um, it has been mentioned before, but I think we must acknowledge that this entire ministry um, appreciates and is very firmly behind the efforts of the creatives in our country. Although we've had some challenges of late, particularly with the advent of COVID, and that the creative industries have suffered, um, the arts, especially since many of them involve events, and we know the restrictions with protocols, but we believe that the creative industry, particularly art and craft, still has a very important role to play in the development of our people and our country. We still believe that there is a high demand for our products and our services. And we still believe that as a country, we have opportunities to market and develop our product. And so I want to express that this is a, a unique opportunity for the government and the people of Taiwan and St. Lucia to collaborate and to give this industry, this sector a boost. And so it's a very timely um, visit by Yaya to collaborate with our local trainers and to assist in passing on some of the competencies, the skills, and the relevant expertise that would be needed by our people to enhance what they already have. And so I thank the ambassador and his team for facilitating the visit of our dear friend and I look forward to the bountiful benefits of that visit for Mutual, um, for St. Lucia and for Taiwan. While I sat there, I was paying attention and I was earlier, I was given a little brief on the products. And I'm very, very impressed with some of the, the, the stuff that I see there. And I was just paying attention to the kanawi on my left and I realized that it's a long time I haven't eaten anything from it. Um, and I'm sure you will agree that no bouillon or jot tastes better than the one that is cooked in the Kanawe. Um, the aluminum pan cannot substitute. And I'm happy when I heard our local facilitator mention that we will try to save this and not allow it to, to disappear. I think we must do that and preserve those very powerful tools and cultural symbols that we have in our country. I want to also remind all of us that the creatives really is a, me a method of expression for us as a people. It's through the creatives that we, we define who we are. When we listen to the music, it always takes us back to, to the times when we sort of were sitting around the table with our families and enjoying good local music. The craft um, is another way of expressing ourselves. It tells who we are. It, it says something about us. And so the creatives need to continue to get support. I'm very proud that the Ministry of Tourism and the Creative Industries have embraced this effort together with the Republic of China and Taiwan to ensure that we, we give some, a little boost to what has really seemed, as correctly stated by our, one of our previous speakers, as a sector that seemed to have dwindled a little bit. And we cannot afford to allow that to happen. Our history, our heritage, and our culture in this country must be preserved. It defines us, it is our identity, and we must never allow it to fail. I want to also, I want to also thank the organizers for 
putting together what we, we call the weave through. Um, I think it's coined developing the indigenous craft sector through cultural exchange initiative. And I think this is a great opportunity to build capacity among our people. And capacity is as, as powerful as infrastructure. There is a tendency in our country that we believe the only things that we can celebrate are the buildings and the roads and the things we see, um, the, the things that people build. Um, there are some things that are not just visible, but it's evident in the things we do. And that is as important as infrastructure. So I'm very happy that there is an effort to build capacity um, between our two countries, Taiwan and St. Lucia. And I want to commend the government of both countries, particularly the effort of our ambassador in ensuring that this happens. Um, I also want to acknowledge that there is um, evidence of a lot of what can be done with our local products. We have the bamboo, we have the coconut, we have the couscous grass and, and the clay, and many other um, indigenous local um, materials that we can take and develop into something special and make it marketable. It's one thing to produce, but you also have to make sure that what you produce is of quality that it can appeal and it can gain you benefits, particularly from our visitors and of course our local folk. So we have to focus on quality and ensure that whatever we produce is, is of, you know, of, of authentic quality. And I have every confidence that with Yaya and our local coordinators that we will ensure we have some serious quality in the products that we will be able to produce. Finally, I want to ask you, um, I'm, I'm speaking now to our local trainers who are sitting a little bit away from me. I want to ask you to take advantage of this opportunity. I thank you for having waited. This morning we had to wait a little bit, and that's why I'm going to end now. I don't want to keep you here much longer. That I think it's a great opportunity. You've taken time, and like good Shwazel people, you've sat there, you've not complained. That's one of the things that defines us. I'm not from Shwazel, but I always admire. And I, I want to probably mention that I have a little bit of a connection because my wife was born in Reunion, just over there. Um, I think there's a special you know, trait in the people of Shwazel when it comes to their discipline and their, their character. And that, express, that expression is in the art as well. So today I saw you sit there, you waited, and now that you know, we've come to the, the, the important parts, I want to end and thank you for your patience and ask you to take advantage of the opportunity of the training that comes to you. And so on behalf of the government of St. Lucia, the Ministry of Tourism, um, and all the, the ambassador and the people of Taiwan, I want to thank you for the effort, and I look forward to the bountiful benefits that it will bring and a mutual, mutually for our country and for Taiwan. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable um, Ferdinand. At this point, um, we would um, like to hear from our crafters. Um, we would like to express a measure of gratitude for this project. And so we invite the president of the Sozel Craft, Crafters Association, Ms. Clara Edward, to deliver the vote of thanks. should never end without expressing gratitude. Therefore, on behalf of our craft association and heritage tourism and all the crafters present here today, I have pleasure and honor to express my profound gratitude to all those who in one day, one way or the other, made this launching of our craft training possible. As our craft industry began to slow down and our livelihood seems threatened, you came to our rescue. This training is intended to sensitize, motivate the young folks for sustainability and revitalize our craft industry in our community. 
special hard times to the Ministry of Republic of China and Taiwan, Ambassador, His Excellency Peter Shen, Mr. Stephen Sao, Second Secretary Embassy of Taiwan in St. Lucia, and Miss Yaya Li, our resourceful facilitator for Taiwan. Ministry of Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information, Parliamentary Secretary, Senator, Honorable Gideon Ferdinand, DPS, Solange Belize, National Skills Development Center, Ms. Selma Sembri, General Manager, and Mr. Barry Paul, Deputy Manager, gratitude for giving us the privilege to use the Craft Center. Export St. Lucia, Ms. Sonita Daniel, Chief Executive Officer, and Mr. Vern Emanuel, General Manager. Thanks for assisting and supporting us in all our endeavors. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, Ms. Cindy Eugene, Marketing Specialist in the Ministry of Commerce. Mr. Darian Lee, Attaché and Representative for Honorable Bradley Felix, Parliamentary Rep for Chosel Saltibus. Thanks for your encouragement and support. Senator Honorable Pauline Antoine Prosper, PS in the Ministry of Education. Thanks for your support and encouragement. Ms. Deborah Tobier, General Manager through Value Building and Hardware Supplies. Mr. Presley Shalmain, Chosel Proprietor. Ms. Finola Jennings Clark, Senior Craft Advisor and Resident Facilitator. Ms. Dorcas Nopshal of Chosel Craft Center. Department of Housing and Local Government, Chosel Saltibus Constituency Council. Thanks for your support. Mrs. Ramona Wynn, Executive Director of the Cultural Development Foundation. Miss, you did the work of a superwoman. You religiously made countless trips from Castries to Chosel to ensure that all logistics were in place for our training. We thank you immensely. <laughs> Mr. Tyron Harris, Mrs. Jana Augustine Stephen, Ms. Carla Chico, Ms. Drina Frederick, Ms. Maya Claville, and all the staff of the Cultural Development Foundation. We thank you. Our gratitude to all our musicians who came here to relieve stress, even if we were getting impatient, but we got back alive. Our sincere gratitude to our technicians on the ground, and also appreciation to all our crafters for your presence here. If in some reason, for some reason I inadvertently omitted your name, please hold me excused. Once again, I thank one and all. Thank you very much, Ms. Edward. And return, in return, um, ladies and gentlemen, or our invited um, guests, let us um, please say thank you to our crafters who um, dem has demonstrated their willingness to participate in this very important um, spotlight on Taiwan, spotlight on Taiwan, sorry, craft enhancement project. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for all our participants. So like I said, the project is entitled Spotlight on Taiwan, Craft Enhancement Project, and we've come to the end of our official launching ceremony, and of course, 
the theme for our project is weave through developing the indigenous craft sector through cultural exchange initiatives. Once again, thank you.